Hi, and welcome back to my shop. I'm really plugging away at my display box project now. I've got all of my joints cut and I have all of the splines cut that are gonna hold them together. So now I can start doing some of the final steps. I have to prepare for insetting a piece of glass in the top. I also have to apply my hinges in the back and I need to come up with some kind of creative way of putting a small handle on the front of the case as well. And then finally, I need to set a bottom in the box as well as the shelf that I'm gonna line with velvet to display the necklace that's going to go in this case. So first, I need to start cutting some rabbits and then I'll actually be able to move ahead with the glue up. So the last thing I need to do before gluing up is I have to cut a slight rabbit on the underside of the box top to receive the glass that's gonna fit in it. And I have to do the same for the, the bottom, I'm gonna put a slight rabbit in and then I'm going to inset a piece of quarter inch stock to make the bottom of the box. So to cut my rabbits, I'm gonna come over to the router table because these are relatively short pieces. I think this will be the safest method. I've ordered glass that's half an inch wider and longer than the opening in the top of the box. So that means I'll have a quarter of an inch overlap where that glass sits inside the rabbit. So I have my fence set so that I'm uh, got a quarter of an inch reveal here and I've left it a little bit deep so I can rock this back and forth just because I want to ensure that the glass is going to fit in there. It's, it's okay if the opening is a little bit bigger but if the opening is too small it means I have to go back in and fine tune it and that's not something I want to have to do. And then I also want to float the glass exactly in the middle of the depth of the top of the box and I ordered special eighth inch tempered glass. So for that eighth inch to sit in the middle inside of half inch stock, I need to have that rabbit go 5 sixteenths of an inch deep and that should leave 3 sixteenths of an inch left on the top of the box. So I'll dial that in, lock it down, and I'm just gonna run a test cut to make sure that my math was correct. So I've got a piece of half inch stock here to make my test cut. So just to double check that my math was correct, I've got an 18th or an eighth of an inch block here representing the glass, and then a 3 16 inch block here representing the cleat that's gonna hold the glass in place. Stack that on top, and that's nice and flush. So that means I found the center of that piece of half inch stock to insert the glass. Now that I'm gonna cut the actual pieces, I've tried to make this as idiot proof as possible and I put a white chalk mark exactly where the rabbit should go on each piece. So I'll just make sure that that white chalk mark is in that bottom corner before I cut each piece because it would be a shame to cut a rabbit on the wrong corner at this point in the project. Now, I also need to cut the rabbit in the box bottom, but the difference is the box bottom is going to be fit with a piece of quarter inch MDF. Now, for whatever reason, quarter inch MDF is not actually a quarter of an inch thick. It's actually a little bit less. So rather than using actual measurements, I'm just gonna use the thickness of a sample piece of MDF to set the height of the bit, and then I'll run the pieces standing up versus lying down. So I just lay a straight edge across that and I'll lower my bit. <laughs> I'll lower my bit and then raise it till it just touches and lock it down. So then I know that my rabbit is exactly the same depth as the bottom piece. I've gone ahead and cut out a piece of MDF that's the right dimensions for the box bottom. 
And I also went and put a little bit of wax all the way around the edges here. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue up the bottom of the, the box here directly on top of that MDF. And that's gonna accomplish two things for me. One, when I put my splines in, it's gonna ensure that the splines are sitting on top of that MDF rather than below and therefore blocking its ability to service the box bottom. So it's gonna do that. And it's also gonna keep everything perfectly square when I go to clamp it up. And I know that the box bottom is gonna fit perfectly. And that wax will just keep any glue that ends up dripping through from actually sticking to the box bottom because I wanna be able to remove it before uh, this glue dries. Now with splines, you basically have two options on how you're gonna glue up. I could slide in the side first and then slide in the side here, but it means that I sort of have to synchronize all the corners and slide them in at the same time. The uh, other disadvantage to that method is that I'll probably end up with a lot of glue squeeze out on the inside of my box, which is the hardest part to clean that squeeze out from. So what I'm gonna do is put glue inside those grooves and in the miter, and then I'm gonna slide my splines down until they meet that MDF. So then all of my glue squeeze out is gonna be on the top where it's really easy to remove. For the top of the box, I'm gonna to have to go with a slightly different clamping solution, but just like I did with the bottom, I cut a piece of MDF to exactly fit inside where the glass is gonna go. And again, that will ensure that my clamp up stays completely square. Now, because I have these splines in the corners, I can't use the band clamp all the way around. Otherwise, that would only be applying pressure to the splines, not to the sides of the box top itself. So I'm gonna apply front and back pressure just inside the, where the splines go. And then I'll also put clamps on the, uh, on the edges here and apply pressure this way to draw everything together. And then I'll make sure that the splines are nice and aligned. And then I'll also apply pressure top to bottom to make sure that the bond between the sides and the splines themselves are nice and tight. I've just taken the box bottom and the top out of clamps. So everything glued up nicely. I know it's nice and square because I used those MDF inserts. So now my next step is just going to be to go in and clean up all of those splines and cut them flush to the rest of the case. So for this operation, I'll just use a combination of tools. I'm gonna to start with my flush cut saw. And then just move over to my block plane to clean up. And then just repeat the exact same process for the main case. And then I'm just gonna hit it with my random orbit sander with a little 180 grit to clean up any last imperfections. Now I still have to mill my top piece to final size. This is basically gonna be the straight flat piece at the back that the lid is going to get hinged to. Now, because I want this to have a nice soft close, I'm gonna end up putting little felt dots on the bottom. And because of that, when I mill this, I wanna make sure that my back piece is just a little bit thicker 
so that I have a consistent reveal from the top all the way to the bottom. So I'm just laying this on top of a pad of those dots and I can feel that I still have a little bit more work to do. But I do want to hit this with my smoothing plane kind of as a final finish. So I'll use the smoothing plane to get this down to flush and to also clean up that piece. And then after squaring off one end, I flush that up with the edge of the box and just make a mark on the other side. And there's my top piece. Now that I've got this back piece on there, the last thing I need to do is fit the top to the box. If you remember, I left the back of the top square. So I'm gonna to need to cut that bevel to get that to match up to the same angle. So I'll do that on the table saw. Now I know that I have a nine degree bevel on the front of that case. So I've just set a nine degree angle on my table saw. Then, if I lay this on top, you can see my angle matches nicely. And we still have, obviously this is still a little bit raised, which is why you see that little bit of seam. I'm gonna end up bringing that up with the hinges and the bottom will get brought up with those felt pads. So, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding and then I can move on to installing the hinges.